washing we and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet as Gabriel sounds a call Prophecies fulfilling and signs of the times they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the father as he says, Son, go get your cheese. Midnight cry, the bride of Christ shall rise. And Jesus steps out on the cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise. and listeners and we're nearer the time of Jesus coming again than we were before we're nearer the time on this program this Monday at 2.30 p.m. UK time on ECC TV this is a ministry of every creature commission television it's a ministry to the saints those who are born again believers and even more it's a ministry to all 
to all, to every creature, to every person in the world. For all, for all, my Savior died, said the great apostle John Wesley. And this is true. Jesus died, a once and for all sacrificial lamb, pure and spotless and without blemish, on the cross, on the cross, and rose again the third day. And he has paid the price. He has given the sacrifice for all of us to believe on him. For all of us. So glory to his name today. Hallelujah. Let's rejoice for what he's done for every one of us today. Those who believe and those that a dear friend of ours, Kim Freeborn, used to call the lost sons of God. That is everybody who doesn't yet know that Jesus is their Lord. Jesus is Lord. Make that commitment today before he comes again because behold, he said, I come quickly. He said, I come quickly. The time is short. The time is short. And that's what this program is all about. I am Lindsay Griffith. And I'm hearing from the Lord about these end times, about the urgency of these times. Hallelujah. And you know what? When Jesus comes into our lives, there is no room for fear. The more we press into him, the more we love him, the more we let him work in our lives, the less room there is for fear. Because it says in these last days, says in the word of God men's hearts are failing them because of fear for the terrible things that are happening throughout the world and the terrible things that are going to happen as it says in the book of Revelation that we have touched on many times this week but for those who believe those who give their lives their hearts to Jesus and accept him as their Lord and Savior there needs to be no fear because God is love and perfect love casts out all fear and I'm going to sing a lovely song to you now called Because He Lives it's a very very famous song and it's all about what Jesus has done and why we need to have no fear today or tomorrow
Hallelujah. I want to make an appeal now. After the words of this song, Jesus said, I am he that liveth, that liveth and was dead. Behold, I have the keys of death and Hades, of death and hell. Revelation chapter 1. Look it up if you have a Bible. Because of him, life is worth living. He has already conquered death. He was brought to this earth to destroy the works of the evil one, the one who brings sin and death. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Please believe. Those of you who are in fear and depression and feel life is not worth living, please believe it is worth living. He can turn everything around. Later on in this program, I'll be singing a song at the end of the program called The Old Rugged Cross Made the Difference. It still does. Please believe you are worthwhile. Your life is worthwhile. He has had a plan for your life since the beginning of the world. Not even just since the beginning of your life, but since the beginning of the world. Please believe and reach out to him now. Because last night in another program, a wonderful program called the On Fire Meeting, another of our programs every Sunday night, I felt led to stand in prayer and the word against the spirit of death that spirit of antichrist that spirit of death and hell that spirit that's been trying to take out the young people in this country has been trying to kill off the older people believe it's no longer worth living because they're a burden it's been trying to take out even the babies in the womb you hear me right now, you devil, you spirit of death. You get your hands off those people. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Don't let your hearts fail you because of fear. You are worthwhile. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us start off badly in life. All of us. Because we're separated from God. And because we need to make that commitment to Jesus and to recognize him as our Lord. You, you listen to this. Listen to this. There is hope. Everyone is worthwhile. Everyone was created for a purpose. God has a plan for everyone. Do not give up. Do not give up. We are in a battle, but Jesus has already won it. 2,000 years ago. So rejoice with me and confess Jesus. I'm going to sing a lovely hymn. Now this is an old hymn called Rejoice the Lord is King. And it tells the whole story of Jesus and of his plan. God, God sent him. God planned it from the beginning of the world to send his only begotten son to save the world. And he has done it. So eat your heart out, Superman, Batman, all these other comic car cartoon cutouts, because Jesus has really done it. It's not a story, it's true. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice. Rejoice again, I say, rejoice. Rejoice, the Lord is King. Your Lord and King adore. Mortals give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice again.
sits at God's right hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Till his foes submit and bow to his command and fall beneath his feet. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. shall quail and all our sins destroy and every bosom swell with your seraphic joy lift up your heart lift up your voice rejoice again I say rejoice Rejoice in glorious hope, Jesus the judge shall come and take his servants up to their eternal home. We soon shall hear the archangel's voice, the trump of God shall sound. Rejoice! Hallelujah. It's not a great hymn. You see, he's coming back to judge. He's coming back as king. He's coming back as judge. To judge what's called the quick and the dead. That means those who have died and those who are still alive on the earth, both. Hallelujah. All must come before the judgment seat of Christ. Even those who believe, who have accepted the Lord Jesus, born again Christians, they will have they, they will have a judgment of their works. You see, you have to understand in these last days, these days are full of deception. You've got a true church. The remnant, as it's called, and the false church. And what we have to learn is to hear the voice of Jesus and to discern what is true and what is not. He said, beware, be not deceived. He said, there'll be false Christs arise in the last days. All sorts of deceptions would happen. We have to learn to discern between the true and the false church because guess what? You read the word of God, you'll see it says that Jesus himself in his own words said that many people will do things, do what they consider to be good works and say, oh, we've done this in the name of Jesus and done that in the name of Jesus. And he'll say to them, depart from me, for I never knew you. That's the false church. Put it another way, the sheep and the goats. He talks in a parable, but it's about separating the sheep from the goats. I'm sure most people have heard of that. Yes, because the sheep are those who hear his voice, who hear and obey the voice of Jesus, the true church, the true body of believers. But the goats, some of them may say that they follow Jesus, but they've never done They've never obeyed his word and done the works he wants them to do. And I'm going to read very, very shortly from now, in fact, from the book of Jude. It's a short letter about the end times in the Bible. It comes just before the book of Revelation, which is the big one about the end times. It's the letter of Jude. And you know, Jude, great name that, Jude is believed to have been Jesus' half-brother on the earth, brother of James. And he came to be a believer. He realized Jesus wasn't just his, inverted commas, brother, or his half-brother, really, but Jesus is Lord. He accepted him as his Lord and Savior. And Jesus and the Holy Spirit revealed to Jude the awful deception, the things that were going to happen in the end times. Right? 
So this is really important. What he says to believers is verse 3 of the letter of Jude. That you should, I exhort you, that you should earnestly contend, that is fight, battle, defend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. In other words, there's the true church, there's the true word of God, there's the true faith that was once delivered to the saints. But even all those years ago, already deception was creeping in. And he goes on in verse 4, For there are certain men crept in unawares, and they do all these evil things, and they deny the only Lord and our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, they crept in. They're called infiltrators. They creep into the church. They creep into churches, and they pretend to be so holy, but actually, inside, they're ravening wolves. And got to beware of those wolves because they come in with a hidden agenda, with an agenda. And I'm telling you, those of you who know about conspiracy theories, who watch films like The Da Vinci Code, and Angels and Demons, and so on, you'll be aware to some extent that there are ravening wolves outside who infiltrate. Well, this is the truth now. This is conspiracy fact in the word of God. Hallelujah. And it says here that, you know, he warns in verse 5 that God, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. You see, the only way that we can please God is by believing in him and accepting him as our Lord and Savior. And that's what the true church does. They believe and they also obey. And so in these last times, he says, this is what Jude warns in verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last times who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. But we, verse 20, beloved, those who are believers, need to build ourselves up on our most holy faith. So this is a word to believers now who've already accepted Jesus. Build each other up. Build ourselves up. Build each other up. Exhort and encourage. Build up in the whole, most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes, very often, we don't know how to pray. We can't pray in our own strength. But the Lord Jesus, He will give you, and through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, He will guide us into our truth and He'll give us uh, the heart of God, how He wants us to pray in given situations. This is praying in the Holy Ghost. You see, God, if you ask Him for the Holy Ghost, for the Holy Spirit, will give you heavenly languages to pray in. Hallelujah. As He did on the day of Pentecost. It says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And it ends up that He, Jesus, is able to keep us from falling. And He's able to keep us through all these times, these end time troubles and trials and tribulations. He's able to keep us to the end and keep us from falling. If we ask him, we need to know we can't do these things in our strength alone. And what I want to say today, hallelujah, in these last days, hallelujah, is trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Because he has done it all. 2,000 years ago. Now, he deals with real situations. He knows our hearts. He knows what's going on in our lives. All of us. He does. So in these last days, I want you to, and he wants you to, which is much more important, come to the foot of the cross because the old rugged cross made the difference. Hallelujah. Thank you. Oh, 
the difference do you know I want to share with you in these last few moments of this program I want to share for you what it actually is like to face hell this is actually a personal testimony some years ago when I was quite a new Christian I was saved as I shared with you born again out in South Africa a long time ago, a good few years ago, I came back home again. I was living in Dundee at the time, Scotland, and I was a teacher. And I came back home again. And, you know, I, I took up with my friends and I took up with my old life. It's so easy to slip back into that. But at the same time, I was witnessing to people. I was saying, oh, you know, I know Jesus Christ. You need to get to know Jesus. You need to become a Christian. You need to be born again. But, you know, I was a total hypocrite because my own life was not 
right with God because I was saying one thing outwardly and living another life in my private life. And one night, you know, I was going through all the motions of being a Christian and everything, and one night, God said to me, and I wasn't ill, I wasn't on, on anything, I wasn't on drugs, I hadn't been on the drink or anything, it was just, I was in my right mind, and he said to me, so I was just going to bed, and I was in bed this night, and he said to me, you're a hypocrite. And I said, what? No, I'm not, no, I'm not. And he said, oh, yes, you are. And he, he actually withdrew his presence from me. You can't mess around with God. He withdrew his presence from me. Now, it's really terrifying. I can't describe to you what it's like. Once you know the presence of God, and he's, you've asked him into your heart, you know, and you have this new life, and you're messing around with God, he, he just withdrew his presence. Now, it was only for a few seconds, but it was like an eternity. And I saw a, a vision in the spirit of and I was actually standing on the edge of a massive great high cliff a hugely high cliff far more than a normal high cliff and down at the foot of this cliff there were bodies writhing in agony and I realized that God was showing me in a way I would understand a vision of hell and I was right on the edge of it right on the edge of that cliff and you know, I said to him, I said, Lord, I'll do anything. I'm so sorry, Lord, I'll do anything. I'll sort my life out. I'll do anything. Please, please come back. And you know, because David, King David in the Old Testament, in Psalm 51, he also committed a, a, a really terrible sin, a terrible crime. He was normally a godly and wonderful king. But on this occasion, temptation got the better of him and he actually did commit not only adultery, but he organized for the woman's husband to be killed in battle. He sort of set it up, put a contract on his life, if you like. And this is a major sin he did. And he said, oh Lord, you know, I'm so sorry because a prophet revealed to him what he'd done. And he realized the full horror of what he'd done. And he said, oh, please, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. King David pleaded and begged and God did forgive him, you know, because he said he was, you know, he really meant it. He showed total repentance, you know, and I did that that night as well. And God didn't withdraw his Holy Spirit again from me. You know, he brought, he brought it back, but I just want to share with you, you really have to obey and serve God. There is such a thing as hell. And there isn't such a thing as once saved, always saved. You know, we've still got to day by day walk with God and ask him each day. You know, Lord, I'm going to give, this is your day, you made. What do you want me to do today? I'll, you know, this is what we need to do and be obedient to him. And then life has no fear. You know, and we, 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 we will be going, we will go to heaven. We will meet one another in heaven that we have that assurance of salvation so you know don't risk it don't risk going to hell don't risk it it's a terrifying terrifying thing so i just leave you with those thoughts jesus is lord jesus is love jesus is life and health and peace Hallelujah. And he's the spotless Lamb of God who died on the cross and rose again for each one of us. And I thank you for listening and watching this program. Look forward to seeing you next Monday for the next installment at 2.30 p.m. UK time of the Midnight Cry. And I just want to remind you about a couple of programs coming up tomorrow at the same time, 2.30 every Tuesday. There is a wonderful program showing Jesus as the wonderful healer and going talking more about obedience, obedience and the two-way covenant between us and God. You know that he is our healer on condition that we obey him and serve him and obey his word. And Margaret Dransfield is presenting that program and you'll be really blessed by that. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 2.30 as a, there's a, three wonderful, very deep programs presented by Brian Mason. Hallelujah. Reese Howell's Intercessor, that's Reese Howell's Intercessor continuing. The Keswick Convention continuing. And on Friday, the Protestant Reformation increasing. Hallelujah. And as I've said already, every Sunday at 7 o'clock, 
p.m. UK time. There's the on fire meeting. Wonderful, powerful manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Spirit and the Word coming together. You'll never be the same after one of those meetings. It's amazing. And preceding that, on the Sunday afternoon at 2.30, there is a special meeting up there called Shalom Intercession, International Intercession Group, when we pray and intercede, and that goes along with and precedes that program on fire. So be blessed by every Creature Commission television, www.ecctv.org, also seen on YouTube. Be blessed, and we look forward to hearing from you. We look forward to hearing from you. You can email us on phcc4219 at aol.com. You can phone us as well on 01492544451 or 0044 from overseas, 1492544451. And this is Lindsay Griffiths. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praising the Lord and thanking you for watching and listening today. And God bless you and keep you until we meet again on television or however we're going to meet. Praise the Lord. Bye just now. Bye. God bless you.